In this video, I'm going to teach you how to run a match defensive scheme against the 2x2 two two spread. We're talking today about how Cover 4 Palms works whenever you're facing spread formations, why I think it's the best defense for the spread, and how you can maximize the coverage. Now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I upload new videos every single day. And today, we're talking about Cover 4 Palms out of the nickel normal, which can be found in the San Francisco 49ers offensive playbook. So I'm going to back the ball up here and kind of get us into a situation here. But before I do that, I do want to let you know that um, if you want to get my full San Francisco 49ers nickel normal defense, I'm going to put a link to that uh, Patreon. It's all in my Patreon. You can get access to every ebook that I've released by joining the Patreon for just 10 bucks a month. And so if you want to get access to all of that content, uh, there's a link down below. Like I said, we have 13 offensive and defensive ebooks uh, available for you there. Just by joining today, you're going to get access to all of those. And so we're just kind of continue to kind of pump content out in the Patreon. So if you're looking to get better, I think there's no better place than the Patreon membership. So for just 10 bucks a month, like I said, head on down to the description and join that uh, once you watch this video. Now we're talking today about the spread two by two. I got a question about can I break down palms and how it works against spread. Uh, and so what we're going to talk about today is a check that you're going to get out of palms that I think is really unique. So uh, I'm going to come out in palms, but we're actually going to put quarters in our audibles. And I'm going to illustrate a, a key difference between the two uh, defenses that I think is really, really important. Okay, so when we come out in palms, basically what it is, is it is essentially quarters. If you know how quarters works, I've always taught that if you can count to three, you can play quarters. It's something that I heard in a coaching clinic that I watched. And that's basically what we're going to do here. So when we talk about quarters, we talk about numbering the receivers from the outside in. So if you take a look at this little screen here, you're going to see that Mike Evans on the left side, number 13, he would be considered the number one receiver to that side Scotty Miller then would count inside like I said so Scotty Miller would be the number two receiver and then when we talk about palms and quarters those are split field coverages and the way that I like to teach it is that it's essentially as if the center cuts the field in half and so now when we talk about the right side of the formation we have three receivers to the right we have number 81 Antonio Brown who's going to be the number one receiver to the outside on the right side of the field we have Gronkowski, who's the number two receiving threat on that side uh, as the tight end or in that slot position. And then 27, uh, Ronald Jones, who is the number three receiving threat in, out of the backfield. Okay. Now, if I were to motion this formation over, then what would happen here is now Evans would be the number one to the left, Miller would be the number two to the left, and Gronkowski would be the number three to the left. And on the back side of this, Brown would be the number one and Jones would be the number two. So you see how I'm saying if you can count to three, you can play this defense, okay? Now the reason that we need to know the numbers of the receivers is because the quarters, the numbers of the quarters uh, are actually gonna relate to those receivers. So let me walk you through this just really, really quickly here. And what we're gonna see is that um, Mills, the number one corner uh, or the number or the most outside quarter zone, right? The first quarter zone, if you will, he is relate, he's going to play in relationship with the number one receiver. So if the number one receiver goes vertical, Mills is going to connect or convert into main coverage on Mike Evans. If number one does not go vertical, then Mills essentially is playing kind of a zone drop, but he's actually playing in relationship now with number two. Essentially, once he discards number one, he's going to move to the next logical threat, which would be the number two receiver. Now, uh, McCourty, the second inside quarter on that side, is going to play is going to play in relationship uh, with the number two receiver. So in this example here, if Scotty Miller goes vertical, McCourty is going to take him in man coverage. However, if Scotty Miller goes under, let's say he runs a drag, a hitch, a flat, or something like that, maybe even a quick out route, for example, McCourty is actually going to let him be covered by this defender, which is Jones, who is in the quarter flat, and McCourty's then going to turn and play and look to help on the number one receiver if the number one goes vertical. If both receivers go under, then they're going to look to the backside to see if they can help out on any of the routes on the backside. Now, on the right side, it's basically the same thing, right? So Jackson is going to be playing in relationship with the number one receiver on his side. In this example, it's Antonio Brown. And so because of that, if Antonio Brown goes vertical, Jackson takes him. If Antonio Brown goes underneath, Jackson passes him off to the underneath defenders. Uh, Phillips is the same basic principle, right? If Gronkowski goes vertical, which is a route 10 yards or more, then Phillips is going to take him. If uh, Gronkowski does not go vertical, then Phillips is going to pass him off. Now the underneath defenders, um, underneath defenders, so quarter flats in this, 
Um, they're going to play what it would, I don't know exactly the term, uh, but basically they're in what's, what I would say is match carrying deliver and they're gonna reroute number two. So the hard throws or the throws that most people like to make in spread uh, are these deep posts to Gronkowski or like a seam or, or like a seam streak to Scotty Miller. So something like this, right? If you got this route combination, okay? This is very, uh, very, very popular. Something like this, right? Okay. So Jones, what he's going to do is he, he's not responsible for number two vertical. But what he is responsible to do is he's responsible to reroute number two if he goes vertical. And then he's going to work to the flat and take the first player to the flat. So in this example right here with this route combination, he would take Mike Evans. Okay. So um, where this all really gets interesting is Duggar. So he's on what's called a three rec hook defender. What a three rec hook defender does is they are basically gonna work in relationship with the number three receiver. Now typically what's gonna happen in, in, in a spread set is if, let's say for example, Jones runs a streak, right? Let's say that you, know, you get a route combination that looks kinda like this, if you will, and I'll show you how this works. Um, so let's say, let's say you get something like this, okay? You get a, a streak, you get a corner, um, and then you get a vertical seam to the back. What you'll notice is the three rec will wall off that seam streak, and then that quarter flat and three rec, the three rec will typically take him vertical, okay? The, the player that is the most important player in spread sets is the three rec, because essentially he's gonna match carry deliver shallow crosses from the number two receivers or the number one receivers, but he's also responsible for if the running back goes vertical. Most people aren't gonna send the running back vertical out of a spread set. They might send him to the corner or they might send him on a seam wheel, but they're not gonna send him straight up on a streak. Very rarely will that happen, okay? So that's kind of how Palms works. Um, now, or uh, quarters works. Now, Palms works exactly the same as quarters. The major difference is if number two goes to the flat. So on this play deep attack right here, you're gonna see, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snap the ball and what you're gonna notice here is that the outside quarter is gonna go with number one because he's going vertical. And then as you see, or I'm sorry, that was palms. Let me check the quarters and, and show you what I'm talking about here. So in palms, what you're gonna, or uh, in quarters, what you're gonna see here is he's gonna take number one and then number two is gonna be taken by the quarter flat, okay? That's the, major, that's, that's the big deal with quarters, okay? With palms and the way it's gonna work, the difference um, is, that if you watch really closely here, now what's gonna happen is the number one corner is gonna bail down and the number two safety is gonna get back on that on that seam streak. I actually played that very poorly right there. Um, but that's the basic concept. So let's say for example that number two goes to the flat on both sides, then what you'll see is you'll see something like this. That's a popular play, um, you know, slot outs or something like that, right? They do too quick to the flat. You'll see the outside corners on both sides will take it, and then the safeties will go back and they'll play the vertical. Whatever the vertical is, too, not just a fade. So let's say, for example, you got, um, let's say, for example, you got something like this concept right here, and then maybe on the right side you get something like this, okay? Uh, the right side's going to play more traditionally like a quarters would, and then the left side is gonna do that little swap off. So you see here, the little swap off, and then you've got this match. Now Palms, in my opinion, plays really, really well this year against two by two. You notice that when I send like to the wide side of the field, because this is a traditional way that people like to play Palms, and I wanna show you something cool. So I'm gonna press coverage here. I'm gonna put Gronk to the flat. I'm gonna put Jones on uh, a Texas pattern, or you know, really whatever you want to and then you know we can run it like this. But basically what you're gonna notice here is it doesn't matter if I'm pressed up or not, I'm still gonna get this really good swap off and I'm gonna get that playing really, really well over the top. That is something that hasn't always played that well, okay? It really hasn't, but this year it really does. Now I wanna show you one other thing about quarters. Let's say for example that I run um, quarters and I press, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the smash concept out there and what you're gonna notice is in quarters, they're actually gonna go ahead and lock on to those outside receivers. So what quarters should do is they should go back, and I'll show that from palms, or I'll show that right here, actually. So I'm gonna go to quarters, and then I'll go to smash, and what you'll see is they'll go back to the outside corner like they're supposed to, right? So you get a double team on that corner. That's how it's supposed to defend it, okay? You're supposed to be getting bracket coverage on the uh, corner route. 
However, whenever you press out of quarters, what happens is you get a different set of rules. And basically what you're gonna get here is it's going to put your corners in man-to-man -man on the outside receivers, which can be helpful and at the same time cannot be helpful. Um, as you can see right there, that actually played very well, but that's just the bottom line is you're getting man lock on the outside. What I like about palms is if I run that same route combination like from Smash, what you're gonna notice here is Palms is different. He's not gonna he's gonna convert back into his zone and he's gonna go play the corner as you can see. So to me that is really, really, really cool because now what I can do is I can play Palms. My personal recommendation will be to spy this backside nose tackle, put Barmore in a three rack hook defender, and then use her this middle linebacker right here. Um, because now you have some freedom and and now what you can do is you've got your palm coverage which is going to be solid but you also have the ability to lurk over the middle of the field for any kind of deep crossers and as you can see um, one of the best plays in the game deep attack is completely bagged by match coverage so that's a basic overview of how palms works against two by two if you want to learn a little bit more of an in-depth scheme and how you can actually use all these stuff from nickel normal out of the san fran playbook which for my money has the best defenses uh, all around this year i would really encourage you to join the patreon we've got other defenses in there as well uh, but nickel normal is the one that i've been on for the last probably month and a half and it's just very very effective we got a ton of offensive stuff there if you want to learn offense uh, but anyways if you want to get better at the game if you watch the video all the way through consider joining the patreon if you want to join the patreon head on down to the description and click that link thanks for watching the video and we'll see you guys next time